can't believe it is almost June and it is like 54 degrees out. It's freezing. It's rainy. Okay, so this place is a complete and utter disaster. We got to do something about it. Do you want this? No, not at all. That thing creeps the f*** me when I had that in my room in New York. I hated that. So if I die, it's going to cause you distress to throw it out. Not even a little bit, I'm and sorry. It doesn't bring you any joy. Does it bring you joy? Doesn't matter. Jessica? <laughs> Question. Does this bring you joy and do you want it? No. Brittany had one of these at home and put a hat over its head because Brittany didn't like it either. Screw that. So you guys don't mind if I get rid of it? No. Who does it? Burn it. Burn it in hell. You can't burn her. You don't remember Brittany put a hat over its head? One of like the hats she got at a bat mitzvah. She put it over its head so that way she didn't see his eyes. Brittany's, this thing used to scare Brittany. Okay, the one that this... she had in her room. This was the one I had in my room, but Brittany had one with a pink dress. Yes. In her room. And Brittany was scared of that. I remember, yeah. and also I told, you told me that, because I, Brittany told me that the, its eyes follow her, and I was scared about that, and then you told me if its eyes are following me, it's either Nanny Norma or Bubba Beverly. So I used to look at this thing and think it was one of them. <laughs> I remember that perfect. So many YouTube videos. Look on YouTube. You go on YouTube, right? Look up YouTube of uh, uh, whatever kind so of dolls those are night, moving. When it and would scare me, I used to look at it and, and say in my head, good night to them. There's been plenty of people that... That's so weird. there's memories. But it was scary memories. I didn't like it. There's but I used to say good night to them to make me feel better. So put don't you video, want to keep video, it? No. Maybe it was a, you're like your guardian angel. No, put a video camera in front of it and just... Watch it. No. Like at night. Yeah, just put a video camera in front of it and watch it at night. And then... Whose was it? If it moves, then you gotta burn We got it in Belgium, remember? And then when I brought him home, you said to me, Ugh! When I walked in the door with it. Seeing if her eyes are moving. I used to say bless, probably, because you can't play with it. Well, yeah, you, you gotta leave it alone. So you, you're you acting like you, you want it. No, I don't. But I'm now saying I probably hurt, said that probably like, when you gave ever. it to me, yeah. because yeah. you gave now, me a doll that I couldn't play now they, with. No, you gotta catch hot. it off guard. You gotta put a camera on it. and Secretly. It in, yeah. What little know. girl wants a doll they can't play with? You can't play with a glass doll. True. So it was a you gave me a toy that I couldn't touch. How lame is that? True. True. I damaged you. I damaged you. She has a point. Here's a point, but don't touch it. I completely damaged you people. But it's a toy for you, like. Um. Yeah, you should be able to figure that out. Yeah. It doesn't sound like it's too easy, but. And if anything, my father could do it. Yeah. Where are you guys going? Nice. Have fun, guys. That way we can really see the doll move. I hate you, you know. <laughs> if you blink, I'm gonna freak out. <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome back. Today I'm going to do something that I've been asked to do many times that I really haven't gotten into it. I'm gonna color a rose today. Now, we all have roses in our books. Um, some of you have even written to me that roses were your favorite and you really wanted to know how to do them because they're not as easy as people think, but I have some tips and tricks for you for all flowers that I think you're going to like. Now, I'm going to draw my rose today myself, only because I don't have one that's large enough to show you the absolute details that I wanted to show you. So when I don't have one in my coloring books that's good enough to teach from, I'll do it on my own. So I'm going to be using Arteza paper, and this is the mixed media pad, the premium pad. It comes with 60 sheets, and the package comes with two books. This pad is 11 by 14. I love this paper. Uh, the books are perforated, so you can tear out your, your work. I really love the tooth on this paper. Let's get started, and we'll see how I do.
I've got some of my darker tone onto the page. Now, I should be able to do this entire rose using one pencil. I can use the magenta and do the entire rose. All I'm thinking right now in my mind for any rose that you're doing or any flower that you're doing is where is the tone? Because really flowers don't change colors all that much in the petals. If you take that petal and you pull the petal off and let's take a look at a rose. Now look at this petal. You have your darker shade going right there. But if I pull this petal off, it's really all the same color. It's all the same hue, but it's the tone of the hue. And other other colors that I'm going to bring into the rose um, are just mimicking what the tone of that flower is going to be. So basically, I could be using any color. If I wanted to make this a blue rose, I could. If I wanted to make it a yellow rose, I could do that too. As long as I have that... Um, tonal difference throughout the entire picture. Now, on here, it's obviously very undeveloped. I'm going to now take a darker tone, but instead of using my magenta, I'm going to switch my color up because we are doing this in colored pencil and I have the option to be able to do this. I've switched over to a polychromos and I'm doing this because I want my darker shades to go into specific places where they're not going to be so much blended. And remember with the polychromos, it's going to layer. It's not going to blend as easily as, say, the Prismacolor does. So the polychromos for you guys, you can mix. If you're going to use... Now, I'm using dark red. If you're going to use... Um, just Prismacolors all together. You can move into like a crimson or anything that's like slightly darker, but it's going to show up. So I've chosen my dark reds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to look. Where are my darkest colors going to be? And I'm talking about like dark. So I'm going to have dark red in here. And you see, it blends up nicely with the magenta um, as far as tone goes. It's the same kind of color, but a darker version of it. Now, later on, I will add gray into this for my shadows or, or like a shadow color. I'm probably going to add blue, not gray. Um, I like to use indigo when I'm doing reds it's just my personal preference and when it comes to roses and flowers in general you really want to get a sharp edge on every single petal that's what's going to give that distinct look and the bundled up look so you don't you want a hard edge and remember we talked about hard and soft edges hard edges distinguish different areas. What it does is it makes sure that one object is separate from another. A soft edge is what I'm going to do inside the petals where I'm going to make soft edges on things that to make it bend and blend. So I'm going to work on this a while, let you watch, and then I'll be back. So I've worked out one of the petals 
and I was just playing with some of the colors that I'm going to need. And this is going to be on the more darker end. And I've chosen as my really bright spot in the rose. In the petal, it's going to be, I think this is Scarlet Red. This is Scarlet Red from Polychromos. And I've also added a little bit of dark umber. Now, when you add dark umber onto red, you're going to get like a brick red, which is the color that I'm looking for. I'm looking for down here to be really dark. It's going to even get darker as we go on. I haven't used any blending pencils or anything to blend it as of yet. And what I like also about using the umber on it, I can add some details into this petal, little imperfections that go with the petal because no petal is perfect. So you might have little marks in it, maybe a bug bite and some striations. And you'll also notice me, which I've never done in front of you guys because I'm always filming, but when you're using artist paper and especially the um, anything that isn't a coloring book, it's a little bit more important. Pencil usually moves all over the place. If you haven't noticed, it gets into your backgrounds really easy. And I'm just using a piece of tracing paper under my hand to keep some of those marks um, at the minimum as I can. I'm going to start working on this petal. And in this petal, as I'm looking at my reference photo, on this petal in my reference photo, it gets very bright right in here and that's why I've kind of left it open and I didn't put any of the, the reds in the darker reds because I want to really just use the scarlet in there and I'm going to still use the same colors but this is you'll see is going to brighten it up especially when I get a little darker on the edges the nice thing about using paper instead of coloring book paper is I get a lot more tooth and I, I really like the tooth in this paper and they really give you a lot for what you're ordering. Um, with it being mixed media, it means that I can actually add other things onto, onto this paper, not so much in this picture, but if I really wanted to do a little bit of watercolor um, if I wanted to do marker, um, that's what a mixed media picture is for. I don't have to worry too much. But then again, with all markers, I always put something underneath just so that it doesn't run through. And I'm getting this exactly where the sun would hit it the hardest. I am using a mixture of wax and oil pencil. Remember, the oil pencil will not blend as well, but that's nice because you can get the oil pencil on the paper and then the wax kind of creams it up. Now, if you noticed on this leaf, my edges are very clean. That's what I want to see in pictures that have hard edges. Remember, I'm making these... Uh, petals they're similar in color but I want them to have different structure I want them you to be able to see that each petal is its own thing and that's why roses are really great for beginners to practice on because it really gives you the ability to work on your hard and your soft edges remember this would be the hard edge and this is the soft edge as it blends into the petal. And the petal is beginning to take on shape. So as you can see, I am defining it as it is developing. Now, this is part of this. This is actually, it, this petal goes around. So when I try to blend 
the lighter into the darker you'll see it gives a nice soft transition. Some people have trouble doing roses, but really that's, they're really very forgiving. Flowers in general are very forgiving. You could screw up a flower and nobody would know the difference. And because they're all different, as long as you got the color right and kind of the general shape of the flower, you can't mess it up that much. Now, the scarlet looks a l definitely orangey compared to the other colors that I've been using, and that's okay because when I add in the umber, it'll go right back to that brick red. And I want to make sure that I keep these two as separate structures. And as I'm adding in the scarlet, you could definitely see the edge better. Um, using circular motion, circular stroke. I did do a little bit of cross hatching on here. And that was just because of the way my hand angled. Now, for the rest of this picture, I'm going to go petal to petal. I'm not, I'm going to treat each petal, oh, there's something on the paper. Um, I'm going to go petal to petal. I'm going to treat each petal as if it was a completely new picture. And when I finish, you're going to see that it comes out looking like, a rose. Now on my reference picture, there's almost a white area. Not even almost, there is a white area that's in between this petal and this petal. And I'm going to include that. And the white instead of the dark will be my hard edge. This is going to take me probably about two days to do. It's definitely not something you do overnight. I'm developing it more than I would normally a coloring book picture. Although I have no intention to put a background on it. Um, there's nothing in it that really sparks a full picture. And what I mean by a full picture is that if I did some negative space, if I worked into the negative space and I want to put leaves and stuff, and I would probably do like a blurred background on here. Um, I haven't made my mind up. Maybe I will. I mean, I'm saying this early in the picture, but I may, may not. I may move on to a different lesson. You know, I'm not just doing a demo. I'm trying to teach you guys how to do this and how to blend your colors and pick your colors. So if I work on the picture too long, then I don't get to um, do the next lesson. I know that frustrates some people who like to see the whole thing done. Some of my subscribers, they write me, where's the part two of it? But sometimes I just don't do a part two. For that reason, because I want to teach a specific thing and I'm demoing that specific thing. So, okay, so my scarlet is done on here, that layer of scarlet, and I'm going to just move this back, adjust it. And I'm going to get out my dark umber and I'm going to start working on where it would sort of 
bend and twist. So on here, I got the right one. No, I have, you see, you gotta always check your pencils. Check and double check. Okay, dark umber. Now I'm just adding in some structural things that I'm seeing from the from the picture that I'm my inspiration picture. And my inspiration picture is pretty dark over here. When I work directly from an inspiration picture. It's kind of like I don't have to think. I just have to look and then you color what you see. Not what you think you see. That's something that artists have to develop that eye of being able to see three-dimensionally in two dimension. I have to be able to flatten the picture out in my brain and see exactly what is perceived because in your mind you will perceive a color. If you think that a color is supposed to be in a certain spot your hand will automatically do that. And artists really need, well, and what you have to learn is to disregard what you think you see, what you think should be there. And that even goes on coloring books. Okay, if you want to do the best job that you could do on a coloring book, you still should follow all the rules that I give you as far as even when you're doing original artwork or um, coloring books. Art is art. And that's why a lot of my intermediate students are starting to grow bored with coloring books. You're moving past it. You want, you're recognizing where lines shouldn't be, where you want lines, where you want shading, wishing for that perfect picture. And that's how you become very, um, how we say, uh, picky about the coloring books where when you were first starting out, you were actually looking at the um, picture as a whole. Now you're, as intermediate artists, you're looking at the paper because you've learned really garbage paper is frustrating. Um, you don't want to use your expensive pencils, which is really, I mean, wh why would you? <laughs> I wouldn't use my Holbein's on a coloring book. My, I mean, you spend a lot of money and all of a sudden it does make a difference. But it was hard at the beginning. I mean, a lot of my, my students, my subs, um, you're at the beginning, so you don't realize it. And I have a book coming, I'm getting a little bit off topic. As I ramble, I have a book coming. Um, I'm I'm so excited about this book. Uh, I'm not going to tell you much about it. Okay, I'm not going to tell you everything about it yet. But it's um, how we say the great artists, the great works. I can't wait to get my hands on it. I'm supposed to review it 
for the artists. And when, when I saw it in like, when they sent me some pictures of it and what was in the book, like my heart was fluttering. I was like, I don't care what paper this book is on because I love the the artwork. Okay, so I have a question for you guys. Who's your favorite great artist? Renoir, um, Da Vinci. Now, you could see I'm adding in just some things that I'm seeing in my picture. I don't have to add them all. They're all it's a flower. Every flower is different. This is my favorite part of coloring or doing art. When that bottom layer is on and you are just doing like the top and manipulating the colors and a lot of my students only take it to this level they don't take it past and get into I mean I once like described it as a cupcake and everybody eats the cake and forgets the frosting the frosting is the best part the best part is your upper layers, developing the colors, the different the little hues that are in it. And then people stop. And Melody, I, I think it was you, Melody Trotter, hon, I saw your... I believe it's you, and if it's not, if it wasn't you that sent me this picture, your hair picture. Um, I responded to your other one, and I didn't respond to the hair picture because it's easier to talk to you about it than. And this is for everybody because I I wouldn't be singling her out. She's such an adorable lady. I love her to pieces. Um, you did excellent. You real I mean, I love the way you're progressing. I, I seriously do. The one thing I have to say about the hair is you have to look at the hair and define a little bit more on your highlights. And that's kind of like what I'm doing here. And that's why I waited to talk to you about it and I'm talking to everybody about it um you see where my highlight is in here you could see it's a big chunk well that's what you got to put in your hair too you got to do the individual hairs you did the individual hairs really good I'm so proud of you you it was great but now you have to think of where is that big highlight going to come in and that's the next thing that you have to work on. But the other picture that you sent me, I loved. And I love when people send me pictures and go, I know this is going to be terrible. You're going to think it's terrible. And I never do. <laughs> it's really, I find it funny when people do that. I'm like, it's not so bad. I'm, I'm, they judge uh, themselves harder than I would judge them. Always so nervous. Don't be so nervous. Anybody that wants to send me a picture and just wants to, um, you know, just get some feedback where you can go with it. Uh, so many people have done it and they've, they've written me back. Oh, you know, I tried it your way and they, I did it great. You know, I didn't realize that was what you're supposed to do. So if you, you're ever in question or you just want a little second eye going out on that picture, send it over to me. I will definitely 
tell you, and I do tell people when they do fantastic, like the one picture that I loved, <laughs> there's been a lot of pictures I've loved, but Tammy did uh, that one picture I talked about um, of the house. I don't even want to touch it. I, she got me that book. I'm afraid to touch the book because I don't think I could do as good as her. She's a, she's a very good artist. Okay, so second paddle down. <laughs> and now I'm going to add just a little bit of highlights in it. I am using my Derwin. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> my Derwin Chinese. <clears throat> and I'm going to see where is the white marks. There's a white mark right here. This is a little bit more orangey. I'm going to change up the color. I'm going to darken the color just slightly. I'm not feeling this. You know what? I am feeling it. I'm going to leave it alone. I want to see what the rose. It's not the exact color of the rose that I'm looking at. But then again, my printer stinks. And... When I was working it out from the picture on the computer and I was working out the colors, um, I worked out these colors. Oh, some people asked me about these coloring apps and I did a review on one. <coughs> coloring apps are fun. But I want you guys to keep in mind they are not the definitive color. The only time you should be using an app is you really just cannot get the main hue of where to start. And remember that even if you move an app, the dot, a little tiny bit over, you're going to get a completely different color. But the hue, remember we're working with um, tonal value and... So your tonal value could just be triggering that app into thinking it's a completely different color. When it's not, it's just a darker version of the same color. So be careful using those apps. But yeah, I have um, I have two of them. I don't use them very often, like almost never. But for people who are new... <coughs> I wish I had them three years ago. Okay, so that's petal number two. And I'm going to stop for the night because I am going out to dinner. And I will see you guys a little bit later. I'm going to... Oh, there was other, and something else. Um, how do you guys like the little bit of vlogging in there? I, I like doing that. I want to be able to share things that I do, especially in the summer. Las Vegas is so much fun. So for now on, like my videos are going to have a little bit of vlogging in them and lots of art. So, okay, so we did two. And I will come back with part two of this and we will get this done. I'll probably do maybe five more petals when I come back. So I will see you guys tomorrow.